Right guys, hopefully I can make this quick. Uh, we're going to learn today how to, if you've got a bunch of files in a directory, which you might have to contend with, imagine for example, um, well, basically these are all of your data files in here. So I've, these are all your data that I made. Um, I made them through this thing called playing with gains, which is my own construction. I've just pulled one of these out, taken the student number off as an all data.zip, double clicked it, and I've now got a directory in here. It's going to unzip, it's going to take a little while. I've now got a directory in here called all data. Okay, so all data has 0 to 171, so it's got 172 files in there. So how do we go through those and do anything? I'll tell you what I'm also going to do, I'm going to throw a couple of added extras in. I'm going to duplicate a couple of these files. Let's call this uh, junk file. And let's put something else in. Let's say I've got one called data file. Let's make one a .txt as well. Okay, so say we've got some text file in there. So what we want to do is we want to be able to go through all of these files and just look at the just the comma separator values. Okay, not the CSVs. So the way we can do that is we now know this 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 one up here loop over files. This is a Jupyter notebook that is in the same directory as where I've just unzipped things. So not where I've just unzipped things. It's in the same directory below which there is this subdirectory called all data. Okay, so that's my first thing I'm going to do um, is say data or folder to view. It's called all data. Okay. I'm going to import a package that's going to help me do things, and it's called import OS. Okay, OS, I think, well, I think it's short for operating system. Um, it's very handy because it's a, what's called a device, oh no, I don't want that to pop up. It's a device independent um, package. It means that it will do all the heavy lifting uh, of working out how it iterates over things, how it operates on different files. Um, without having to know what operating system you're on because obviously those operations are slightly different whether you're working on a Mac, whether you're working on a, on a computer, so whether you're working on a Mac, whether you're working on a PC or whether you're working on a Unix computer. So what OS does is it says okay I'm going to have a set of methods that you can use um, that you can use, you can use this OS dot whatever and it will then tell you the syntax that we need to use um, Sorry, it will, it will do all the heavy lifting for you. I've described that really poorly. But what we're going to do is we're going to use something called os.listdir. Okay, so let's see what that produces. Let's do print os.listdir. Okay, uh, and I'm going to supply this the folder to view. Let's see what this produces. Here we go. It's giving me all of the data files within that folder. Okay, so there's again, there's about a thousand different ways you can do this. This is just the way that I happen to think of at the moment. I, I might have used another method doing it slightly earlier in the day. This has now told me we can list all of the files in this directory. That's not a particularly useful thing for us to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this inside a loop. I'm going to say for, no, let's uh, run this again to get rid of all of these, these, white, these things. I'll say for file in os.listdir. Now what that's going to do, it's going to go through that list and it's going to say file is equal to the first item, file is equal to the second item. So I can do this, print them out sequentially. Okay, so we've now got all of these files in here. And I can do things with them if I wanted to. So I've got these CSVs, there should be a single TXT here somewhere, and there should be a junk file in here somewhere as well. I've got my junk file, and there should be there, there will be a TXT in there somewhere. I can't see where it's gone. Okay, so I'm also going to change the syntax of file just so we can so I can narrate this a little bit better. I'll say for i, comma file in enumerates. You don't need to do this bit, this just helps us understand how loops work. We can say print 
file. Okay, so it goes through all of those files in there. Now, I'm going to want to put a conditional in there that says we only want to look at the CSVs. Okay, so we'll say if file dot ends with dot CSV. I don't want to do anything at the moment, but I'll say else. There we go. So what I'm doing here is saying if the file is a CSV, don't do anything. Okay, you have to put a pass in there because if I don't have that pass, it's a, it doesn't know what to do in this block here. So you put the pass in, tells it to do anything. I'm just showing you how this works at the moment. Okay, data file 17.txt is not a CSV. Okay, we can also to put an, an, an else if in here, we'll say else if file dot starts with not to say if not we'll say file Well, no, that's not right, is it? Because my other my file I changed to junk file dot csv, so I'm I'm this line won't work. So let's get rid of all those bits that I've just written. Let's keep that there. What I want to do in here, I want to say if file dot starts with if not file starts with data file, print. There we go. It's telling me it's found junk file, it's not suitable. File data file 17 is not a CSV. And in this case, I would then say if it gets to this point, it means that it's ends with CSV, it's not a junk file, else FID is equal to F open Uh, well, in fact, we could just do my matrix is equal to mp dot read csv file. Now I need to load in numpy. There we go. Uh, it doesn't like read csv. Oh, it's import numpy as mp. That's why. Down here it says mp is not defined. I haven't called anything MP. So up here I'm going to say import numpy as MP. Doesn't like read CSV. Ooh, I think it... Ah. I can never remember how to do this. So let's say, I think it might be read TXT. Let's do help. MP.read TXT. Read text. Okay, I can't remember how to load a CSV in, but I know I've gone through this with you guys in previous le lessons, so let's have a look. NumPy loading a CSV. NumPy.load text, that's it. Load TXT. I'll then do up here NumPy.load TXT file delimiter. Skip header equal one, for example. It says here it doesn't like um, skip header. That's obviously not the, the correct name for that. So let's remember how to what's in here. Let's say numpy.load text. Contents delimiter converters. There's an option in here for headers, and I can't remember what it is.
skip rows, okay? Skip the first skip rows. Now that will, doesn't like that, data file, ah, okay. Next problem, this is a good job I'm going through this with you guys. So what it's trying to do, it's saying, okay, it says here, data file, very first time it's run it, can't find that file. And that's because the file is called, in this case, data file one run 15csv and it's trying to load that in, but actually that exists in a subdirectory. So what I need to do in here is I'm gonna make this into a string, an F string, and I'm gonna say that exists in folder to view forward slash file. It's because I did this using a slightly different method earlier where I didn't have to do this, but let's try running that. Now it runs through. So every time it's run through, it's gonna take a while because this is running through and loading a big matrix each time it's going through, but that's how I know it's working. It's not crashed. It's going through and it's loading a big matrix. And then what you'd be able to do down here, you'd be able to do other steps. Now also, what I've shown you here just is crashed because I, I, um, I keyboard interrupted it. Okay, it still would have worked. Um, the only line you actually really need is this bit and this bit. This other stuff in here is just useful things that you guys should know, okay? So that's if you have a folder of files, how you can load the data from them and do things with them, okay? There's many different ways you can do this. I used a slightly different method earlier when I was preparing for this video. That's how you go through a lot of files in a directory. And we're gonna do things with them over the next few videos, okay? Hopefully that was a useful introduction and should help you guys get on with this laboratory. Take care.